Hello again and welcome back everybody to another edition of the Rural Report. I am your Rural 2IC and today we are going to do our continued coverage for the daily headlines report and boy do I have a report for you. So this one might be a little bit long and just FYI when I get to the kind of final part um, you guys have liked the couple of videos I put out on the uh, what do we want to call it the ugly truce. Um, I'm going to probably get into something maybe a little controversial or whatnot, um, but I, I, I just I have something to share at the very end. So uh, grab something to drink, uh, sit back, find you a comfortable spot, and let's jump right into this one. So let's start out overseas where Taiwan announces that it has detected six more spy balloons flying over the island as of yesterday. Also, they uh, found in the vicinity that there were four aircrafts and four maritime vessels. So, uh, looks like things are going a little on the uptick rather than the downtick. But again, we will wait and see. Uh, also, there was a Chinese uh, uh, airplane, or no, I'm sorry, it was a Chinese uh, maritime vessel that was uh, out over in the waters close to India. And this one is what they use to kind of like map the ocean floor. Uh, a lot of people are coming out speculating that this is to map in order to do uh, deploy submarines in the area. Uh, again, it's all speculations and whatnot, but just a data point. Next, in North Korea, two teenagers was arrested and sentenced to 12 years hard labor. Now, you're probably going, rural. what did two teenagers do to deserve that? Well, they did a very serious, heinous crime of being caught watching a South Korean TV, new, or South Korean TV series. That's all they did. They turned on a series from South Korea. That is banned in North Korea, and now these two teenagers are now sentenced to 12 years of hard labor. So uh, be thankful for your freedoms today. Next, with the post from the New York Times on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, uh, there was the post of the uh, article, and the little picture had the headlines in it about all the zombie virus stuff going on. Well, there is a uh, organization called the Civil Civil. I can talk today. Civil Defense News, and they respond to it. And uh, I'm going to have to probably talk code because I don't want to get in trouble. I apologize if you don't like that, uh, but. Here we go. They said, and uh, this is all in quotes, okay? Virus X will be a genetically engineered disease designed and released by to usher in the followed by the yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, you take it for what you will. Uh, you can say it's a crazy conspiracy. You can say it's tinfoil hat. Uh, you can agree. You can disagree. Uh, oh, by the way, if this might be pertinent to information, uh, you don't have to worry about that anytime like tomorrow or next week because they said this will take place after World War III. Okay, so, uh, you know, if you're worried about this, you got to get your World War III decorations out first. Then you can get ready for this one. So, uh, Think of what it is. Next, uh, just before coming on, there has been an announcement that there is a renewed strike in Yemen. Uh, the U.S. and U.K. have uh, launched a series of attacks. This time, as reports are coming out, uh, these missiles and different attacks are being done by fighter jets, submarines, and aircraft carriers striking different points in Yemen. Now, how serious is this? Well, the U.S. has come out and officially given a name to this operation. So it looks like we're getting a little serious. And if you are wondering, this is going to be called Operation Poseidon Archer. So <laughs> there you go. Opa. All right. Well, uh, if you want to know or if you give any sort of a care of what I have to think, 
Uh, this right here is just a cat and mouse game. Okay. Uh, pretty much everybody's in agreement that this is major players in the world. Uh, basically giving a, a, a stick and, and whatever to some proxies and letting the proxies go through and do, you know, their thing. You're, you're just giving the little people, here you go, here's a few toys, go, go you know, have some fun and, and wreak some havoc. And, uh, and, and I'm not taking away from it. I mean, people are dying. Uh, you know, this is war is bad, war is ugly, things like that. But in all essence, okay, when you're talking about proxies, okay, and if you're in agreement with this, if I can give the analogy that this is kind of like a game of chess, what you're doing is, is you're basically having your pawns go out and, and cause some trouble, move around, try and see what, how everybody else is reacting to the pawns' movements. You can get a clear image of the board just by moving a pawn here or a pawn there. And maybe you might get lucky that your pawn actually takes out a very important piece. And then when the time's right, you start moving your big guys out. Uh, but right now, we're, we seem to be in that, you know, pawn stage where this pawn moves and that pawn moves. Um, it, I, I know it's kind of a sucky analogy, and I apologize. But, I mean, it is what it is as of right now. You have kind of a... Th three layer you got pawns and you got you know come over your your other things of you know your this guy and that guy and whatever then you got your main one so you know your king and your queen so uh those ones haven't really made a presence on the chessboard yet i think they're just waiting to see what some of these other pieces are doing kind of moving some things around trying to get a lay of the land and then i think eventually uh, you will start seeing some big pieces start to move. So, uh, okay, there's my my opinion. Take it for what it is. Um, but to make sure that we ratchet the tensions up, the commander of the 5th Fleet was quoted by saying that Iran is definitely directly involved in the attacks going on in the Red Sea. So let's just go ahead and ratchet some more things up. Um, the interesting part that I found today was Israel has issued a proposed two-month-long pause. Now, in exchange for this, one of the biggest things that they want is all hostages to be released. Uh, will that happen? I very seriously doubt it. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Now, uh, before I jump into the uh, homeland stuff, uh, this is your reminder that tomorrow the doomsday clock will get updated. So uh, we will be able to officially see when uh, the world is going to come to an end. Uh, so be prepared for that one. All right, so moving on into the uh, homeland here, uh, U.S. CENTCOM has come out and announced that after a 10-day uh, search and rescue mission, that the two missing SEALs are officially considered KIA. So uh, they considered that uh, they have not found anything, that uh, they are now considered killed in action. So uh, prayers go out to their families, and for all those that are involved in that, I hate seeing U.S. troops uh, be put out in things like that. Um, so they made the ultimate sacrifice. Moving on, uh, BMW Manufacturing and Robotics has teamed up with a company called Figure. This Figure is a startup company. This is actually their first, um, what do you want to call it, uh, adventure, if you will. Uh, and they have announced that they are going to bring a plant to Spartanburg, South Carolina. So if you are down there, uh, congratulations. You are getting a massive uh, robotics plant. And... Uh, they're going to build what I believe they call Figure 01. It is a humanoid robot that, uh, if what they're alleging is uh, you know, what's going to come out of it, this Figure 01 robot will be, uh, again, humanoid, but it will basically be able to take over a ton of tasks and a ton of manufacturing and all sorts of things. So just what we need. Uh, so from the New York Post, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this one. So the 
they have found out and they, they claim to have the evidence that the House J6 committee has deleted more than 100 encrypted files days before the Republican took majority House. Okay, so that, that might be interesting to come here in the future. We'll, we'll see about that. So, uh, but let me get into the the kind of meat of this. I want I don't want this to be a, a hugely long video, but I, I have something that I'm going to share uh, about some of the stuff in the news, and I, I want to give a little bit of a talk about it. Um, so, in case you missed it, the Supreme Court did come out today in a 5-4 ruling and decided that the White House can indeed send federal agents, I suppose, uh, to remove physical barriers from the Texas border. Okay. Before I get in, I'm sure a bunch of you, if you're on any social media, have seen the video. It, it went completely viral. And it is about a guy down there uh, with a bunch of the uh, people crossing the border. And there is, and I'm going to say alleged, because I can't prove any of this, but uh, this person in this viral video uh, is allegedly an illegal from the Middle East. And he says, you will know who I am uh, soon enough. You will know, trust me, you're about to find out. Uh, and, and there's all sorts of things coming out about you know, what everybody's speculating that means. Um, so we will have to you know, kind of wait and see. Now, do I think that things are going to come about this? Well, here we go. So we just had the Supreme Court ruling that come out. So now the Supreme Court says federal agents can go down there and, and take apart all the different physical barriers, obstacles, razor wire, everything from the border. They, it's completely 100% legal. They can go down there. They have federal authority to go do it. So what now? Okay, well, basically there's two choices. Texas can either say, my hands are tied. You know, federal court ruled it. That's what they got to do. It's what they got to do. You know, and just roll over and that's what it is. Or option two, uh, Texas can refuse and basically say, no, we don't honor the, the federal order. We're, we're not going to comply with that. Uh, we, you know, have our own Texas authority and no. And we'll see which one comes of that. Now, do you want to know what somebody else thinks about that before I really get into my thoughts? Well, uh, Representative Clay Higgins went to X and posted his thoughts. And his is, and I quote, my thoughts are that the feds are staging a civil war and Texas should stand their ground. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, well, let me throw a little something at you. Some of you are from Texas, and so uh, if I missed something in my little bit of research, please let me know. But on a little side note, there was a House bill that was introduced on March 6th of last year, 2023. And if I'm correct on this in my Google search, if I'm not, then the internet lied to me. But this is on the 187th anniversary of the Battle of the Alamo. Now, this bill, which is House Bill 3596, or also dubbed the Texit Bill. Now... This bill was written up and announced, but it was never given a hearing and it was never voted on before the end of the session. So there it lies on a piece of paper, just as a House bill. Now, if you want, let's go back and look at something real quick. Let me take you across the water and a little bit of history here. If you look back at the USSR, okay, if you look at, let's say, the late 80s, early 90s, the way that they had just kind of a, a messed up economy, uh, the rise of suicide. Now, granted, there's were probably more vodka overdosing uh, deaths versus ours are more fentanyl deaths. Um, but you take a, a bunch of the things that were going on over there 
and you couple that with the uh, infighting that they had inside of the country. Um, I mean, it almost gives a resemblance of what's going on here, and, and really, ultimately, that led to their not only their political but to the societal collapse in the early nineties. Now, if you really want to look at it, so in nineteen ninety one. Um, the Soviet citizens voted on a, a kind of like a treaty. So it was called the New Union Treaty. And in that treaty, it proposed for the USSR to reform rather than to completely dissolve. And actually, if you go look, if again, the internet is correct, 71% voted in favor to reform. They, they wanted to keep the USSR instead of just completely dissolve it. Well, if you kind of go through your history a year later, the USSR didn't exist. So you had 71% of people, a really big majority, almost, you know, uh, three quarters. I mean, you're talking about a lot of people say, no, we want to say as a nation, we just need to reform it. A year later, there's no more USSR. It's done. It's gone. So if you, we go back, and I, I pulled up a, a poll that I found. So there was a poll done in 2021. And in this poll, it had 66% of uh, Southern Republicans in favor of a secession. In the same poll, they found that 50% of independents agreed. Now, you're starting to hear different talk about Western states of, of Texas, or I'm sorry, not Texas, of California and all the Western states. They have a different political ideology, I understand, but you're starting to get some of these breakup points. It's not just Texas. Yes, I know we've heard Texas over and over and over saying we're going to secede and they never do. This time might be different, okay? And the thing is, is if you have one, do it, okay? If you really have one vote, what then? Will the U.S. allow it? I mean, depending on it, the reason why you would want to leave is because you are going, you know, you don't like what the federal government's doing. So this, and I'm not saying it will, and I don't know if it will or I will. This kind of battle, I'm not really sure what's really going to take place. We're in a whole different kind of ball game here, folks. But let's just pretend for a minute, okay? So Texas goes down and says, Feds, get out of here. This is our state. We're going to do the job if you won't. Uh, feds then go over to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court backs them up and says, nope, you can go right in there. Now, Texas has an interesting thing. So let's pretend that Texas says, no, get out of here. What are, what's going to happen? You have American against American. Is somebody really going to pull that trigger? I mean, I certainly hope not. I mean, uh, God forbid something like that ever happening. I really hope we never find out. I hope it doesn't go to that. But you may end up having a second shot heard around the world. That might spark what a lot of people are, are sitting here guessing might be happening. You could have a standoff and then a vote of secession. Do you really think that the current White House is going to allow a secession? I mean, if you were going to, Texas is probably one of the areas that stands a better chance of seceding, uh, being a massive land size, being uh, having a port, having a bunch of natural resources and, and all sorts of different things. Um, I mean, they, they stand a good chance. Granted, it may be, you know, maybe they don't stand alone. Maybe one of the neighboring states goes, hey, if you secede, we're going to secede with you. Well, if they secede, what stops somebody else? Maybe California wants to go. 
maybe New York wants to go. Is this the breakup instead of the United States? Are we going to go back to just little factions all over the place, kind of like the 13 original colonies? The only thing is, though, is those colonies were united. Okay. This way, we're going to be divided. And then it's going to get real ugly real fast if that starts happening. Now, is this a cause for a panic and alarm? No, I don't think it is. Uh, is it something you should keep your eye out for? Yeah, I, I think you should. I think uh, to all the people that, uh, you know, I get this every once in a while. All this news that you share, it's not prepping related. Most of it is. That's why I share it. If something like this goes down, it can affect all of us. We already went through this a little bit ago when we, we talked about, you know, the Boston Tea Party. Some small group of people threw some tea away and it affected people across, you know, on the other side of the planet. So, yes, this stuff happens. What's going on right now in the Red Sea? What's going on right now in Ukraine and, and over in Taiwan and all this other stuff? It has a really good chance of affecting you. And that's why we need to talk about it. That's why we need to bring it up. That's why we need to have it pinned back here in the back of our head. Yes, right now, it's not affecting us. Not really, not yet. But it has the potential to really affect you. And knowledge is power. You need to have the knowledge of what's going on. Maybe you can see that it's the start of something. Okay, it's on my radar. What's well, starting to expand? Mm, you know what? Maybe it's a good idea that I need to move my prepping around and focus on this area. Well, now it's really going around. Now really a bunch of people are talking about it. Well, as they're just now learning about it, you have been watching and paying attention for quite a while. You're more educated. You can make a more informed decision. You can prep better while everybody else is scrambling, trying to run around and you know do this and do that. You're already on a good head start. Why we do this. So uh, hopefully you guys found some good information about that. Hopefully I don't get my wrist smacked or <laughs> anything worse. But yeah, there we go. So uh, that's what I've got for you guys today. Uh, I hope that uh, maybe maybe this was a good one. If not, then uh, you know, let me know down in the comments. Uh, we have a bunch of things going on this week, so I will see a bunch of you a lot throughout the week. And um, yeah, there we go. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your Monday. And uh, I've actually got the house to myself for pretty much the rest of the night. So I've got a whole bunch of things to do. Uh, unsupervised. So uh, prayers for Little Rural and Mrs. Rural as they are doing some traveling today, uh, but everything should be fine. Uh, but God bless each and every one of you. Thank you guys for spending a little bit of your Monday with me. Stay tuned because there's definitely more information to come and say it with me now. Above everything else, please remember to remain united because we're all prepping in this together.